Revelation chapter 13 is all about World War III. And uh, the first part is how the war plays out. And then the second half, starting around 1313, uh, is the aftermath. So, how is World War III going to play out? Well, the first beast is going to rise out of the sea. That means it's going to have a navy. There's going to be a naval attack. Okay. It's going to have feet of a bear. That means Russian infantry. It's going to, it's going to have the mouth of a lion, which means it's going to uh, take over the currently existing infrastructure of English and of the West. Proof that chapter 13 is all about war says uh, in verse uh, 4, who is like the beast who can make war against him? He's given power to utter proud blasphemies. So after this war, this thing's going to continue to talk trash against God, basically. Verse 6 talks about, um, I'm sorry, 13, uh, Revelation 13, 7. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. The aftermath is he's given a, a authority over every tribe, people, nation, and language, all the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 10, if anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed by the sword, he will be killed by the sword. It's all about war, folks. Revelation chapter 13. The other beast that rises out of the earth is Islam. That's why it has horns like a lamb. Like a lamb. It's not a lamb. It's not the lamb of God. It's kind of trying to be like a lamb. It's trying to say, oh, well, we all have the same religion. Is trying to claim Abraham as a forefather. But speaks like a dragon. The devil coming out of his mouth. Lying. That's Islam, folks. Kind of like a lamb. Kind of tries to be like Christianity a little bit. By claiming that uh, the, the forefather, you know, claiming that, that Abraham's a forefather. And we're all, we all, you know, we're all of the book or whatever. But then at the same time, speaks like a lying dragon. Exercise the same authority as the first beast. The sign of being able to cause fire to come down from heaven in full view of men, that is thermonuclear war, folks. I'm just saying. He ordered them to set up an enemy. Now, this is the aftermath of, of World War III. They set up some sort of image and make people have to bow down to that thing. Kind of like what Kim Jong-un does. And then here it is, verse 16. Forces everyone. So they won the war. They can force people to do whatever they want at this point. Rich, poor, free, slave. Forcing everyone, not giving anybody a choice, you have to take this mark. So when World War III happens, based on Revelation chapter 13, the first beast rises out of the sea. Now, the attack is against God's people, the saints. That's what it says. He made war against the saints. That first beast is in, has a navy that rises out of the sea. That's the Russia, China, North Korea Navy. Rises out of the sea. Attacks. Has Russian infantry. That's the feet of the bear. The economic power is from China. That's the dragon. Then another beast. While the, while the saints are being attacked by this navy. With, the, with Russian infantry. While that's happening. Another beast is going to rise up from among us, from the earth. That's your Islamic side. That's why it's an alliance of Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, Turkey, Canada. 
Obama, Trudeau, Putin, Jinping, Kim Jong-un, the Ayatollah, and Edro Dagan of Turkey. That's part of the beast. That's six of the seven nations. That's like eight of the ten leaders. Now you can mark my words and tell me if I'm wrong five years from now. But... How does how how does the Antichrist run the government? Look at Kim Jong Un. Look at how he runs his government. I'm not saying he's the Antichrist, but I am saying he is one of the ten leaders of the beast regime. The aftermath of that war, World War Three, is the mark of the beast comes out. Now I'm gonna prove it from you to you from Revelation chapter fourteen. Revelation 14, verse 6. The gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Get your Bible out. Verse 7. The hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the Great falls. Verse 8. Babylon the Great falls. Verse 9. The mark of the beast comes out. So Babylon the Great falls. That's your World War III. That's, your, that's America, folks. Babylon the Great Falls, and then the Mark of the Beast comes out. So the sequence of events in Revelation chapter 13 is uh, lines up the same exact sequence of events as Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6. Now, we have seven angels in Revelation chapter 14. Those seven angels continue in 15 and 16 with the seven bowls of God's wrath. That's one sequence of events. There's two primary th sequence of events in the, in the book of Revelation. One is the seven seals, which is continued by the seven trumpets. So the seven seals and the seven trumpets are one sequence of events. Starts in Revelation chapter 6 verse 1 and ends in Revelation chapter 11 verse 19. The second sequence of events is the seven angels and the seven bowls of God's wrath. It starts in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, with the first angel of the gospel. The second angel says, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. The third angel gives a warning of the mark of the beast. The fourth angel is sitting on a cloud and gives the command. Or one, one of them has a sickle, and then there's another one who's in charge of the fire. And another one with a sickle, that's seven angels. So there's, there's seven seals, and then seven trumpets in the first sequence of events. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, starts the second sequence of events, which is seven angels and then the seven bowls of God's wrath. It starts in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, and ends in Revelation chapter 16, verse 21. Now, that last event, Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, is the same exact event as what happens in Revelation chapter 16, verse uh, 17 through 21. Get your Bible out and study what I'm saying. 